conference and posted on YouTube. So thank you, Liz, for clicking record. So we would like to ask everybody to please change your caption to let us know your name and your municipality. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, when you hover your mouse over your picture, or over your name, you should have three little dots that pop up in the right-hand corner. That'll give you options to change your name and add your municipality. Please send us your questions in the Q&A. Go ahead and type them right in. We have lots of staff um, on with us today and they'll, they'll help answer them either in the chat or direct them to our speaker after uh, the presentation is finished. And if we don't get to your question today, feel free to email us at info at anjack.org. That's info at anjack.org. That email address is monitored by um, several staff who are very quick to respond and make sure to get your request to the right person. So with that, let's make sure you're in the right room today. That's what the college professors did on the first day of class. So today we are talking about Environmental Commission's powers and responsibilities. Uh, the discussion will be led by Alex Ambrose, our policy associate. Um, we also have Mr. Dan Bachalis from ANJAC's board here with us today. Sorry, Dan, for not getting the, uh, the slide fully filled out for you. That's my bad. And then we'll we'll host Q&A afterwards. So thanks to Alex and Dan for leading us through today. For those who are new, I know we have a lot of returning members, but we also have a, new, a lot of new Environmental Commission members with us today. So first and foremost, thank you for your service to your municipality and the environment. And thank you for being with us today and hopefully throughout the week. ANJAC has a long winded message It's uh, or mission. It's on our website. You can go ahead and take a look at it and read it at your leisure. Really, our mission is to help municipal officials, particularly environmental commissioners, make good decisions about the environment for their community. We are here as your resource. We are here to serve you and provide um, ideas on strategy, stewardship. Um, we provide technical resources. We provide small grants. Um, I believe our small grant uh, program is still open. We're still accepting applications for that. We work at the local, so the municipal level, the county level, also the state and federal level. We work mostly at the municipal level. And we serve you by providing those direct resources to environmental commissions, as well as to your elected officials, your mayor, and then also speaking to the state on both ends of State Street in Trenton. So the DEP and telling them what's working, what's not working, what you need, and the same to the legislature and the governor's office so that we are a conduit of communication between municipalities and ECs. So our first and foremost priority is to serve you. So you tell us what you need. You email us at info at amjack.org, you post on Facebook, you tweet at us. So if you're not following us on those social media channels, please do um, and, and communicate with us. Let us know what you need. We're not in the office um, nearly as much as we were pre-pandemic. So that info at anject.org email is really your best way to get in touch with us. We pay attention to what you are asking of us and we set our priorities from there. And our three priorities that we get because you are asking us for assistance and guidance on these issues are combating climate crisis, advancing environmental justice and ending plast plastic pollution. Again, we serve you on all of your needs. So if you come to us with a question that doesn't fit under this umbrella, still come at us and we'll provide you answers or get you in touch with people you need to be in touch with. So we are helping you to combat the climate crisis by installing green infrastructure in your communities. So rain gardens, um, community gardens, butterfly gardens that help infiltrate uh, localized floodwaters. We are helping to uh, assist you with your ordinances and stormwater management to reduce flooding. We are helping with um, installation of electric vehicle charging stations and getting that network built out. So there's now an ordinance that, require, that is required across the state so that EV charging stations are installed with new development and with redevelopment. So if you don't know about that yet, shoot us an email, we'll send you the resources on it. We're also gonna be working a lot this year on assisting you with municipal climate hazard assessment. So we're gonna have a whole separate session on that later this year. Um, we had one earlier this year, it's on YouTube. I'm sure we're, we're going to be doing more of it. This is to plan for the impacts of climate crisis that are coming. So to work both the resiliency 
to become more resilient to the impacts as well as ratchet down the greenhouse gases to keep things from getting worse. We are doing a lot of work on environmental justice support to support EJ advocates and community advocates. We're having a round table on June 14th where we are looking to connect environmental commissions and environmental justice and community advocates and then to support an affinity group off of that so that ECs can continue to learn about creating authentic relationships, looking at how local decision-making is supporting um, the continuance of overburdened communities or helping to make things better and advance environmental justice. So we are incredibly excited about supporting you and raising the voices of community advocates so that you can better learn from those who are doing this work. Also, on, so just save the date on June 14th, that one's coming up. We're also doing plastic, plastic, plastic. Why? Because plastic is intimately connected to both climate crisis and to environmental justice. The climate crisis um, is linked to plastics because more than 90% of single use plastics are made from fracking byproducts. So single use plastics support the fracking industry, which we know exacerbates climate change and the climate crisis. The, uh, fracking waste and the fracking products are converted into solid, into materials that become solid single use plastics, primarily in low income and minority communities. So working on ending plastic pollution and single use plastics is an environmental justice and a climate change issue. So we invite you to visit New Jersey No Plastics for lots of information about the upcoming implementation of the Plastic Pollution Reduction Act, which we're super excited about. Um, and then to begin to learn more about the recycled content law. And we'll be talking to you more later this year about extended producer responsibility. So we've heard from you that you wanna tackle the recycling industry and make it work better. So we're on top of it and, and we're gonna be pulling on your resources and your ideas. We also wanna ask you to save the date. We are having our second virtual Earth Day celebration on April 22nd. So on the day itself this year. So just save the date for that and we'll be sending out registration information. This event is exclusively for ECs and it's an opportunity for you to learn from your fellow uh, cohorts and your fellow colleagues uh, serving on ECs across the state about what they're doing in their community. It's gonna be a great event. We're also going to have a room for uh, all of your plastic questions as that law goes into implementation on May 4th. So remember, may the 4th be with you. We're getting rid of plastics. And I also wanna thank you. Many of you donate individually and we'd like to encourage you to continue to do so. And thank you from the bottom of our heart for your support. Your support really empowers our ability to support environmental commissions throughout the entire state. And without you, we would not be able to continue doing the work that we do. So thank you, thank you. Your individual donations matter. We are a 501c3 registered nonprofit. And so we appreciate all of your support uh, that you, you put in through your time, your effort, and your donations to ANJAC. With that, I would like to turn it over uh, to Alex Ambrose, and she's gonna to start to walk us through EC powers and responsibilities. Thank you, Jen, and welcome everyone. Um, as Jen said, this is uh, our, that's crazy to think, it is our third um, virtual event that we had. Um, Liz, can you give a nod just to make sure that my uh, presentation looks correct? For Sheila, okay, wonderful, Sheila said yes. Um, so uh, we are very excited uh, to talk about fundamentals for effective environmental commissioners. Um, today, we're going to be talking about kind of the very basics. Like Jen said, this is kind of boot camp. Um, and to start off, we are going to start with a poll. Liz, if you don't mind launching that poll, I am curious, uh, how long have you folks served on your environmental commission or environmental committee? We, I always, I always forget that we should play like Jeopardy music while we do this, just so we're not sitting in silence. <laughs> I can, I mean, I can sing it if people want. <laughs> All right, we'll give that Liz whenever you are ready. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. We have a pretty good mix here. So lots of brand new people, a few more experienced and a surprising amount of very experienced people. So thank you all. This is good information for us and for me so we can kind of tailor this to um, 
to your needs. So as Jen said, I'm going to be going over uh, what it means to be an environmental commissioner, what you can do, what you should do, um, and a little bit extra. So no two environmental commissions are alike. That's my cat. That's what she's saying. So this, that is going to be an underlying repetitive statement I'm going to keep saying. No two environmental commissions are alike. We do our best to help empower you, to tell you what you can do and should do. However, every environmental commission is different and you'll see some examples of that. So what is an EC? So when we say EC, that's shorthand for environmental commission or environmental committee, we're gonna talk about the difference um, in a second. What is an EC and what can we do? Um, and also just as background, um, as Jen said, I'm Alex Ambros. I am the policy associate at ANJAC. I'm also chair of Clinton Township Environmental Commission. So shout out to my Clinton Township uh, folks. So what can an EC do? The law says uh, an environmental commission is made up of people appointed by the mayor or governing body. Um, they serve in an advisory role. So that means that there are no strict um, rules and regulations, uh, but they are still uh, very valuable to the municipality. Often the governing bodies look to the environmental commission uh, for expertise on environmental, um, environmental advice. Uh, they are, as we said, very important. They have a statute in the state law um, that explains uh, what the powers are, what the rules and regulations are. It specifically states that a commission shall have five to seven members, and it can ha also have up to two alternates. Those are all appointed by the mayor. And one of the members is a planning board member. So that is a full member that also has voting uh, rules. They are not um, an alternate. They are a member of the environmental commission. So we often refer to that person as the planning board liaison. So. My planning board liaison is Sandra, if you're on here. Hey, Sandra. Um, so each town should have an ordinance that establishes the environmental commission. And if you have questions about, you know, how many members you're supposed to have, how uh, the governance works, um, look for your ordinance. Uh, typically the ordinance will use the same language that's in the law, uh, but it's always good to just double check. There can also be other types of members. Um, and we're gonna talk about those in a little bit. So another poll. I am curious, how is your environmental commission meeting now? So Liz, if you don't mind launching that. So the options are, you are completely virtual. You are required to attend in person. You can attend in person. You can also attend virtually or some other configuration and explain in chat. So let's see. And this is relevant to what we're going to talk about next. That's why I'm curious to see how people are how people are meeting. Um, this is a photo actually from our environmental <laughs> um, Congress, Anjax Congress. Um, it's my favorite part of working virtually. All right, so lots of people are completely virtual. Some are allowed to be virtual, but meeting in person. Um, and yeah, feel free to put it in the chat if you have some other kind of configuration. We're curious to see how um, environmental commissions are responding to you know, the ongoing unpleasantness. So this is relevant because we're gonna talk about uh, state law now. So the New Jersey state law says that environmental commission appointees serve three-year terms that are rolling. Um, ideally, they would be staggered. So not everyone's um, term expires at the same time. Um, but they can be renewed also. Uh, environmental commissions are subject to the Open Public Meetings Act, also known as OPMA, because we love initialisms. And this is also known as the Sunshine Law, because sunshine is the best disinfectant uh, to root out any kind of bad stuff. Uh, the Open Public Meetings Act says that uh, if you are meeting with a quorum, so if you have a five-person committee, three people as a quorum, if you have a seven-person committee, four people as a quorum, if more than, if the quorum or more than the quorum are meeting anywhere, whether it is for a meeting, uh, if it is for an offsite event, you must advertise it to the public um, and you must allow the public to participate. There's a lot of very specific legal questions that I'm sure come up when we talk about this. Uh, one of them being 
um, virtual. <laughs> so uh, what um, the New Jersey uh, Business Action Center said is that um, you must, uh, even if you are meeting virtually, you still have to allow uh, the public to, to both view and participate in a similar way. So if you are meeting over the phone, if you are meeting um, via Zoom, WebEx, something like that, you must advertise in the same way uh, with the same advance notice and with public participation. You also have to keep records of your meetings. So um, the law says you keep records. These are usually minutes. Um, and like I said, uh, even virtual meetings, you uh, have to publicize. Um, you also, the law says you must complete an annual report uh, to the governing body. This can be, we're gonna talk a little bit about annual reports. It can be as simple as you going to a meeting and talking about what you've done. It can be as formal as a presentation or somewhere in between. The law also says you shall keep an index of open areas, including publicly and privately owned. So any kind of green spaces that you have, any open spaces, um, and that will help you advise on things like the master plan and how your land is used. Some more things the commission can do. So the law is pretty broad in saying what an environmental commission should do as their role. It says study and make recommendations on water, air, waste, noise, landscape protection, environmental appearance, flora and fauna. That's a lot, <laughs> which is good because like we said, you can kind of tailor your environmental commission to what is best for your municipality. Uh, as we said, creating an open space index. So keeping that index of uh, open spaces in your area so that you can give recommendations. An ERI or an NRI, that's an environmental resource inventory or a natural resource inventory. Uh, we have an entire session on ERIs and NRIs uh, later this week. Once again, if you cannot make it, it will be recorded and sent out to you. But that is essentially an index of all of your natural resources and environmental resources. So you know what kind of geology is in the area, what kind of threatened and endangered species, what's the water like, what's the hydrology. Um, that is a very in-depth and very important inventory. And I wanted to add a note that if you are in the Highlands region, so if you're one of the 88 municipalities in the Highlands region, the New Jersey Highlands Council is creating an interactive fully digital inventory of the entire Highlands region. That includes your municipality, includes my municipality, because once again, I live in the Highlands. Um, so you will basically never have to update your ERI or NRI individually ever again, which is very exciting. Um, finally, the, uh, the law says um, that uh, environmental commissions also receive official notice of certain activities. So for example, I received a letter that um, in my town, they're replacing a pump station. Um, and because it will affect the wastewater, the Environmental Commission received a notice. So you'll often get letter uh, an LOI um, from the uh, DEP that says that certain activities are gonna take place in your municipality. You also will um, get notice of site plan applications uh, for you to review. And once again, we have an entire session on site plan application and review uh, later this week. That one will be a good one. I'm very excited about that. All right, so I promised I would talk about the difference between an environmental committee, environmental commission, and a green team. Environmental commissions are established by ordinance. They are the ones that have the most um, regulation and are the hardest to dissolve. So because they are established by ordinance, that means they also have to be removed by ordinance if they are trying to be removed. And as you know, ordinance requires hearings, approval, votes, everything like that, as opposed to an environmental commission or an environmental advisory committee, or I'm sorry, as opposed to an environmental committee or an environmental advisory committee, those are more normally um, ad hoc created. Sometimes they're established by ordinance, but um, they are usually ad hoc appointed on a yearly basis. And those do not require um, an ordinance to dissolve. They could be dissolved at any time. So they do not necessarily have the same authorities as an environmental commission. Finally, a green team is established via resolution. These became more popular when Sustainable Jersey um, was uh, founded and uh, green teams are very useful in uh, achieving Sustainable Jersey certification. They are a partner of ANJAX. We are very proud of their work. 
Um, and green teams are, uh, they, again, they don't necessarily have the authority of an environmental commission. They serve a completely different purpose. Uh, they are often used for um, outreach, um, doing more activities. So they don't necessarily do the same uh, reviews as an environmental commission. So for example, our green team um, is mainly so that we can help achieve the goals of the sustainable Jersey certification, but they work very closely with our environmental commission. And you can share members uh, on a green team and environmental commission. Green teams also aren't subject to the same um, Open Public Meeting Act requirements, sunshine law, everything like that. So a little, a little less stringent, a little less strict. All right, getting organized. So if you are either a new environmental commission, you are a new leader of an environmental commission, here are some things that you wanna think about. Mission statement, bylaws, annual goals, annual report, and budget. And we're gonna go over all of these. Your mission statement. This is an example of Summit Environmental Commission's mission statement. They focus on leadership, vision, advising the, um, the city of Summit on actions. They create policies for sustainability. So these are some keywords from their mission statement. And a completely different mission statement. Oh gosh, I meant to research how to pronounce this, <laughs> this uh, municipality. It's on the Barnegat Peninsula. So um, they are very connected to the waters that surround them as opposed to a place like Summit. Um, they seek to improve the environmental quality of our land, bay, and ocean. So you can see they focus more on the surrounding waters as opposed to Summit, which focused more on leadership and sustainability. I'm not gonna check the chat because I'm sure someone is teaching me how to pronounce it, but once again, you can see no two environmental commissions are alike. Your mission statement should reflect what your environmental commission both does and wants to do. Bylaws, the most exciting part of an environmental commission is talking about governance. So your environmental commission can and should set bylaws. They are not required, um, but that also means that they are not subject to town council or mayor approval. This is something you can do internally as an environmental commission. Some things that you should include in your bylaws are attendance requirements, meeting requirements and a cancellation policy. So if you cancel a meeting, what are your reschedule options? If you wanna create subcommittees and advisory member appointments, for example, if you um, want to create a site plan subcommittee because every time you review a site plan, you don't want to have to um, be subject to the sunshine law. So you can have, if you are a seven member commission, you can have three people on a subcommittee that can meet and you don't have to advertise that to the public. So it's nice if you wanna review a site plan outside of a regular environmental commission meeting and then bring that to the meeting with um, that information, a subcommittee is a great way to do that. We're gonna talk about advisory uh, member appointments in a second. Um, preparation and distribution of meeting minutes. So do you want to have one person always keep the minutes? Where are they kept? Who sends them to the, uh, your uh, town council? How you um, appoint subcommittees? All of that stuff um, should be in the bylaws and also any other kind of record keeping if you have to. Um, and a letter, a letter of um, advice from someone who forgot to do this at a meeting once, make sure you appoint a minute keeper at each meeting or have a permanent one. So you're not scrambling last minute to pull together minutes. Here's some sample bylaws. We don't have to read the whole thing, but an example from Jersey City is they have a public participation limit. Um, so you have to allow public participation, but there's no rules that say that you can't limit it. So it's somewhere like Jersey City where they probably get a lot of attendance. They limit it to five minutes per person, which is a good tool to use to ensure that everyone from the public gets to participate and no one hijacks a meeting. Some more bylaws. So I talked a little bit about different kinds of members. So associate members are um, one option. You can also have junior members. Anyone that's outside of that five or that seven and the two, anyone that's outside of that five or that seven that is set in your ordinance, anyone who is not that cannot vote at EEC meetings, but that does, that does not mean they can't participate. So you can have someone be appointed as an associate member 
they're there in an advisory and helpful role, um, but they do not vote with the commission. Hamilton Township has associate members and they also have attendance requirements. So once again, you can set these up however is best for your EC. Finally, let's talk about goals. So uh, this is from Cranberry Township. Setting goals is important because from your mission statement, you can make things more concrete. Cranberry Township has a lot of goals, obviously. This is a very in-depth document, including very big plans, like looking at re-examining their master plan, redoing their environmental resource inventory, a lot of stuff. Then you have a different EC, such as Woodbridge, that has more general goals, maintaining a healthy community and population, identify, protect, and preserve open space. Again, there are no wrong ways to do this, but setting a goal is important to keep your vision of what you want the EC to do during the year alive. I don't have to show you all of the cat again to tell you, no two ECs are the same. There's no right or wrong. The goals, um, it's useful also to put your goals on your town website. Um, I know it is not the easiest thing to get posted to town websites sometimes, but that's a good way to both um, tell the public what you're doing and to gain public support for what you're doing. And speaking of support, we have our final poll question. How would you rate your town council slash town commission in terms of how they support the EC? Do not worry, this poll is anonymous, but I'm curious to know, are we dealing with a lot of ECs that have very supportive town councils? Are they in the middle? Do we have any ECs that feel like their town council is impairing their abilities to function well? Let us know. And like I said, it's anonymous, no worries. All right, had to figure out how to unmute myself again. Okay, so we have a pretty good mix of anywhere from extremely supportive to non-supportive and actively impairing. Just as a side note, if you do feel like your um, town council is actively impairing you to the point where it might be in violation of um, what an EC can do, please let us know. We can uh, provide some resources and help you out there. So thank you, that gives us a good sense of uh, what the what the environment is like. And now we're going to talk about how to win friends and influence your elected officials. Um, that's my author photo. So how to become an influential EC. And once again, shout out to my hometown, Berkeley Heights. Here we have uh, Berkeley Heights Mayor uh, Angie Devaney and Councilman Yellen that are helping to cut the ribbon on their new community garden and that man in the hat on the left is their environmental commission chair, Rich. So how to become an influential EC. And this can, um, this can be for both if you have an extremely supportive town council, if they're kind of indifferent, anyone. This is good advice for anyone. Number one, give elected officials easy wins. One great way to do this is to apply for ANDRAC's small grant program. If you can, successfully complete a project that you got funding for that you did not need to ask them to, for anything except permission. That is a great and easy win. You invite the elected to the ribbon cutting, to the opening of whatever it is, invite the press, give them some good photos. Great, easy win. You look great, they look great. Um, holds a small events such as a movie night. Andrak has a ton of resources. You can even um, show movie nights virtually. There's lots of options. Um, and then allow the elected to speak beforehand at the movie night. Invite them and allow them to speak. Be willing to listen and learn. So I always tell people the first time you meet your town council elected officials, it should not be because you want something. You should meet them and establish that relationship first. Just say, hi, I'm here, and ask them what they want from the Environmental Commission. Um, sometimes they have a very specific project in, a, in mind. Sometimes they will say, you know, I want you to give me everything you know about everything in the environment. 
Um, so that's what we mean when we say be open to new ideas. Sometimes they may present you with a project that they want to do that you weren't thinking of. Um, and you can figure out how to prioritize that into your work. And once again, work on what is of interest to the governing body. So for example, in Clinton, we asked our mayor what was his goal for 2022 for the Environmental Commission. And he said he wanted well water testing. Very easy, great. We are working with Virgin Headwaters Association and we're gonna have well water testing this year. He was, he was upset that we didn't get to do it the year before. Seek alliances. So there may be some non-traditional partners in your municipality. So are there faith-based organizations that um, the Environmental Commission can work with? Are there student groups that you can work with? There are lots of existing groups that you can work with on the EC and form those alliances. Offer solutions, not just opposition. If something is wrong, if something is not being funded uh, in a way that you want it to be, um, don't just show up and complain about it. Offer a solution. This is good advice for anything, right? <laughs> Offer solutions. Um, you can brainstorm with ANJAC staff if you have a specific funding problem, something like that. Um, we can we can certainly help with that. Build a base of support. So hold events that the community can come to. They can ask questions about the Environmental Commission, table at events. Just let people know what the Environmental Commission is doing. Post on social media. That'll help you build a base of support. So if there is something that the Environmental Commission wants to start doing, you will know that your base of support is already there. Thanks and spanks. This means that uh, you don't just punish your elected officials when something goes wrong, you also thank them when something goes right. So it is a very common instinct to uh, forget to thank people when they do something right and when they follow through with something. So just remember, remember to do that. If they funded your budget at exactly what they wanted, show up to a council meeting and just say, thank you. Very simple. And again, creates that relationship. Finally, don't take it personally. Sometimes you won't get what you want and that is fine. <laughs> it, it is hard. You should keep advocating for it, but don't take it personally. Sometimes there are things that are out of your control that both the council can't uh, control, the EC can't control. Most of the times people are trying their best and sometimes things out of your control happen. Finally, decisions are made by those who show up. CJ Craig, West Wing, uh, show up to events, show up to council meetings, show up to community events. The more both the council and the community see you at the front lines, the more support you will have. Decisions are made by those who show up. Finally, annual report. What should it include? So the annual report, as we said, is part of the law that um, establishes what an EC will do. An annual report should include a roster of members, all the meeting dates for the year, list of activities and accomplishments, and including uh, goals for the coming year. Let me give you an example. We are not gonna go through all of this, but this is, um, from Lindenwald Environmental Commission. So you can see on the left, they have their schedule for the meetings, including one that was canceled. Again, sometimes meetings get, get canceled. They include their mission statement. Uh, they include major accomplishments. So that's the credit summary and members. And uh, they talk about highlights. Again, you can also include on the next page, we have uh, goals and considerations for 2020. So the annual report is a good, uh, is a good way for the EC to brag about what you have done. You should take credit for all of the work that you have done. I think it's a little inherent in our work because it is volunteer and environmental that we um, tend to not want to take credit, but it is important to take credit also politically because if you show what you have done and like I said, brag about it because you're worth it, you will get more support for what you have done. So. Um, you have to um, give the annual report to the town council. What I also suggest, you it's usually just written out. What I also suggest is asking the town council if you can present it at one of their um, council meetings. Again, a good way for both the entire council to learn about what you are doing and for the public to hear about what you're doing as well. Finally, including goals. So these are not set in stone. 
but just give them an idea of what you want to work on for the next year. Once again, helps build that support. All right, we are almost done. Budgets, <laughs> very exciting stuff. It's important that you have a relationship with your town council so that you know when your town's budget cycle is, so that you are ready when the budget cycle starts again, you are ready with your ask. So your ask should include both the total amount that you would like in the budget and um, as many line items as you can explaining what you want out of that amount. Here are some things that you may wanna consider. And Jack Deuce, courses and conferences. Are you planning on sending your commissioners to any uh, courses and conferences that aren't covered by Anjak dues? Supplies for educational programs and events. You know, having a couple hundred dollars uh, for printing. Professional fees, if you wanna hire an environmental consultant to do any kind of assessment. Uh, website, Facebook advertising, postage signs. Uh, development of ERI, software hardware needs, other. Basically just keep uh, a list of things throughout the year that you would like for the next year. And that way when you're ready uh, for budget season, you already have that list. Finally, I'm just gonna give a little plug for some of the resources that Anjak has. Um, here are some films. So we have the uh, screening rights for the films. So you do not have to pay anything for these. We lend them out and you can screen them in your community to help with educational outreach. Uh, the plastic ones are pretty popular right now. So um, let us know if you would like to uh, rent these. We also have displays. So stormwater displays, green infrastructure display, displays, one on the Passaic River. We have a ton of handouts um, talking about balloons, talking about habitat protection, talking about pet waste. And we also have a ton of games. So these are fun for uh, the weather is starting to warm up. We're gonna have some booths for community day. We want something fun that people can come up and uh, to help engage with us. That's what these games are for. These go fast. So the sooner you can reserve a game, the better. Um, you are much more likely to get it, uh, especially around Earth Day. There's lots of community events. So um, if you would like to know more about these resources, uh, you can send us an email. And we have reached the end of my presentation. So keep in touch, as we said, uh, that phone number, um, as Jen said, we are in the office every now and then. So info at anjack.org is the best way to reach us. Uh, you will likely get an answer faster than if you call, but if you call, you will still get an answer. So I'm going to stop sharing. We have a lot of questions in the chat, it looks like. Um, so now we are going to get to questions. So Liz, how would you like to do this? Would you like to read out I'll questions? I'll read you some of them, sure. Um, and All Sheila right. or Michelle or Randy, if you see any that you think should be read, please do so. Rachel oh, Liz, asked um, what would constitute an unexcused absence? Um, not letting the chair know what, you know, um, she's got a problem with a member that maybe has missed a few last year. Got it, got it, okay. Um, so I'll answer a few questions and then um, I'll pass it off to Dan to talk a little bit as well. Um, what constitutes an unexcused absence is whatever you want to define it as. That's, that's my answer. You can define it as Correct. someone not letting you know within 24 hours, you know, someone has, if you, they have to respond to your email to say they're coming, um, that is something that there are no rules for. So you can set whatever rules you want. But the important thing is, so, you know, if you're having trouble with a member right now and you haven't laid out those rules ahead of time, I can see where there would be some confusion issues. So that's why important, it's important to have the bylaws before a problem comes around. Um, yeah. Okay. Dan? Um, in terms of unexcused absences, I think you need to look at what you're trying to achieve with um, each person's membership and um, uh, look at their other strengths. For instance, in Hamilton, we have some members who, who can't make it to all or even most of the um, uh, commission meetings. Um, and generally, that would be something really bad. 
Um, however, we look at their other additional strengths. For instance, um, we have a, um, uh, an Hispanic member. Um, he is going to be doing one of our major goals this year, translating our a lot of our key public uh, communications documents into Spanish for us. He's, I mean, he's a he's a younger guy. He's got a very very young family. Just had a baby in September, December. Um, demanding job, works a lot of hours. So he's going to be doing that for us um, offline, if you will. And that's that's great because it's something we've wanted to do for a long time. A couple of other people can't make it periodically, but they do show up um for other events and they provide us with other resources that we need to do so if they don't, if they don't show up at all and they never have any communication with you um i have i'm a chair of our lake water quality committee uh, and um, sometimes we have people like that too that you need to talk to them and say are you really interested in 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 this position um it's not always comfortable but sometimes people, people say yeah you know what I'm not in a position where I can do this anymore. Thanks for raising it to me. And um, you know, you can always keep them in the loop by copying them on communications just to, to let them know what's going on and build up kind of um, an adjunct or friends of kind of uh, a group. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was gonna say. You can also have them as an associate member. If they don't think they can make all the meetings, they can serve as an advisor. And also, Dan, do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> I, I didn't give you an opportunity to do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm Dan Bachalis. I'm the chair of the Hamilton, Town of Hamilton Environmental Commission. Um, I grew up in Mercer County, so it's good to see people here from Mercer. That's great. And, and the rest of the state. I've always considered New Jersey my stopping grounds. When I worked for the Department of Human Services in Trenton, um, I had statewide projects. So New Jersey is my play, playground. Um, I've been with the uh, uh, on and off with the commission for the last 13 years, um, even before I retired, which kind of makes you crazy if you're working a full-time job and, and doing some of these things. But um, the uh, Hamilton Environmental Commission was uh, formed in 1975. And in uh, an interesting quirk of fate, um, we took over the responsibilities for our Shade Tree Commission somewhere around 2006. So we're really fulfilling two, two roles, and you'll see that reflected in a, in a document um, that I'd like to share in a little bit. Um, Briefly, some programs we've done in the past, we've updated our environmental or what we call it the natural resources inventory. We, uh, we do development reviews and we've actually, this spring has been pretty busy. We've, we're, we're on our second one already, uh, which is kind of unusual. We went for years with, with none. Now we're, we're starting to pick up again. Um, through a, a very generous grant from Sustainable Jersey, we, we created a uh, water conservation tax rebate program to give people some money back when they buy water saving appliances, which is an ongoing uh, program with the town after the Sustainable Jersey money ran out. So that's that was been edifying. Um, and as you'll see in a, a document that I wanna share, we've got a lot of other things. Um, Alex talked about uh, working with municipal officials, and um, it, it's obviously very, very important to develop friendly and trusting relationships with the people who, who appoint you and the other members of the commission, uh, as well as control your budget, um, provide support for the various things that you want to do, either directly or indirectly. Um, so it's important to, we have a, a council liaison who is in charge of the Quality of Life Committee, which includes the Environmental Commission and a few other groups. But our, our and um, that's an ongoing contact. Our primary ongoing contacts are, frankly, with municipal employees, including our business administrator, director of public works, our supervisor of public works, and our uh, utility or water department uh, uh, chief um we have a whole bunch of other people our rec uh, rec supervisor there it's a small town so people wear multiple hats um and the environmental commission 
can and has gotten involved in a lot of uh, different sorts of projects. Um, so those, it's important to work with those folks um, in a positive way. And one, one, uh, one, I guess, meme or motif is that um, success goes to the successful. If you can, if you can bring in, if you can have a successful project that brings your town a little bit of uh, positive uh, feedback from the uh, news media, or if you're able to get even a, even a small grant from any number of, of uh, groups, uh, so you can show your governing body and your um, uh, municipal officials that you know you are doing things that are are number one are positive for your, your municipality and are seen positively by others, not just in your small circle. Um, you'll see the um, the support grow. Um, and there's another long story uh, that I, I won't bore you with about that in Hamilton. Um, in terms of recruiting members, which is really an important thing since not everybody stays on your commission forever, it's important to be out in the community, talking to people, um, about the environmental commission about various environmentally oriented projects and um a lot of these people will frankly once they know you're you're with the environmental commission they'll seek you out they'll be asking you questions uh, something will pop up in conversations they have with other people and they'll they'll look to you to provide answers again friendly and trusting relationships when the time comes that you need to to uh, tap them perhaps for a, a a seat on the commission Maybe they'll be willing, or maybe they'll know somebody else who's very interested. You never know where those folks come from. Um, we had a, uh, a our annual Green Day festival run by our Green Committee, and um, folks drop by and say, "You know, I'm I'm interested in helping out." Um, so you take their information and you put them you put them to work. <laughs> okay. Um, if I may, I'd like to share, just to show you some of the things that we've been involved in or are involved in right now, I'd like to share uh, the screen. Is that okay? Yep, that's fine. You don't okay. have to put it on the bottom, yeah. I think so. I've got a new computer, so I'm not sure. Um, I know exactly what I'm doing with this, frankly. So let me just try to... <laughs> No problem. Yeah. yeah. Um, of course, it's not. Yeah, well, okay, here we go. Yeah, we, we got that. Um, I don't know that that's being shared. So let me just do this again. My apologies. I, you know, you get a new um, computer and then you find out that it doesn't really do what you think it does. No problem, Dan. You probably have to have the document open before you hit share screen. Yeah, I, I do. Okay. Did you hit share screen at the bottom center of your, the Zoom screen, the little green arrow? I did, and uh, oh, maybe it's application. Oh, here we go. Yep, 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 here we go. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Great. Um, is that coming through? Yes, it is. Okay, great. So. As it happens, uh, we're having our, our monthly meeting this, uh, well, tomorrow night. This is our agenda, and I'll go through it quickly so I don't bore you to tears. Um, but um, obviously, call to order, Pledge of Allegiance, and we go over any correspondence. We have uh, our representatives on the commission from all these various groups, our councilmen, our, uh, <coughs> pardon me, our land. In Hamilton, we have a combined planning board and zoning board um, called the Land Use Board. So we have our various representatives there. Uh, Lakewood Equality, because we have Hamilton Lake, the Jewel of Hamilton. Um, we're a member of the Great Egg Harbor River Council. Uh, um, we have our Parks and Rec representative, our Green Committee representative, and a Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee, which is a relatively new committee, um, but been very active. As I said, we, we also function as a shade tree commission for the town. and. Um, we get a lot of requests, especially in the spring and summer, for um, tree removals. Um, 
Sometimes they uh, will ask to remove trees and actually promise to replace them. Sometimes they don't. Um, most of these folks do not. And a lot of times, you know, the requests are, are valid. The trees are dead, dying, pose a danger to um, nearby structures or are actively invading um, basement um, foundations. And um, we go with that. We also provide consultations to people uh, as you see in this number two there, Genevieve Ramos, um, who wanted to take trees down and create kind of a format. So we went out to, um, again, provide a kind of a hands-on review of the, the property. Um, the heart, as I see it, of our work, even though a lot of times the, the trees take up an, an, an inordinate amount of time, the heart of our work is our annual work plan which I have semi-recreated here. Um, and uh, they encompass not only some things that might be related to the Shade Tree Commission, but also relate to Environmental Commission responsibilities for um, uh, promoting the environment, uh, getting people to pay attention to things like our Tree City USA application. Um, <clears throat> um, dedication by rider resolution actually is a, is a, uh, a mechanism that uh, the Department of Community Affairs allows uh, municipalities to create basically an account for monies that may be coming into the town that they're not sure how much they're going to be getting. For instance, um, maybe fines from traffic violations or um, their monies that they're not sure how much they're going to get, but they know they will get something. This particular resolution um, is to create a fund for the environmental environmental commission to use for various things education of the public on various issues um, true evaluations um, different public education campaigns uh, ev evaluations by arborists there's there's a whole list of things in this frankly uh, one thing I learned working for the state is to measure progress in terms of years. I've been working to get this passed for probably eight to 10 years. And I, I, I have a copy of the thing next to me and I see it's dated 2019, the current version. So some of these things take time. You need to stick with them and um, just keep persevering. Um, we've got a new green building and sustainability element uh, for the master plan, again, um, being developed under a generous uh, grant from Sustainable Jersey, um, which directly relates to our role as the Environmental Commission. Our community forestry plan uh, needs to be updated. Um, the CSIP plantings are, are, we planted 100 trees and created a new, new tree bank for the town. Uh, in addition to planting 50 trees in our parks. Um, so we need to pay attention to that. That's a, a grant from the Department of Environmental Protection. We have a pollinator garden that we've been working on again for a number of years. It's been difficult to, to rouse people to this. This was a, a great grant from ANJEC and um, my ANJEC friends, I apologize that we don't have this done yet, but we, um, we've got um, a good line on uh, volunteers this spring. So we're looking to get this finished this year uh, and move on. Again, public communications are really, really, really important. Years ago, the, um, the mood, I guess, in our town for um, environmental or green messages was not terribly receptive. Over the years, it has gotten so much better now that um, council members uh, regularly refer people to the Environmental Commission, to the Green Committee, to the Lake Committee um, for um, information and advice, and they actively promote um, our various projects. <clears throat> we just had a community-wide uh, uh, cleanup this past Saturday at uh, uh, Hamilton Lake Park, and um, we had to take a bit of a hiatus during the pandemic and we're, we're kind of back in force now. At the last full cleanup we had, we had about 150 member people come out. 
This year we had 175 or more than 175. We lost count, ran out of sign-in sheets. Um, so um, there was a lot of promotion. This was a collaboration with our school system, which is another important source of, of uh, inspiration and um, uh, assistance and again, promotion of the environmental message. Um, again, we have our translating our materials into Spanish, updating various things, getting ready for the plastic bag ban on May 4th. Um, our Atlantic County Utilities Authority again gave us a small grant to create a public sculpture, which we dubbed the Leviathan. It's in the form of a giant octopus. Um, with the skin made out of uh, discarded plastic bags, which we've placed in our lake park, which a lot of people use. Um, so we're using that as a focal point. We've got to obviously plan other uh, actions at the shop right and other, other stores in town. Um, Hope is Hamiltonians are organized for a positive environment. And those are, these are collaborations among the, the Environmental Commission the Green Committee, uh, our Parks and Rec Commission, and Lake Water Quality Committee, and frankly, anybody else who wants to chip in. We have the annual lake cleanup. We uh, are in the process of updating our open space and recreation plan uh, in cooperation with Parks and Rec. Um, we recognize, and we've been telling folks, we need, after we get done with the open space and rec plan or while we're doing the open space and rec plan and while we're doing the green building and sustainability um, and element for our master plan, we also need to update our stormwater management ordinance. Um, um, Dan, I just want to make sure we have enough uh, time for questions. Sure. So, is there anything else you want to go over uh, here before we move on? There's lots of questions about your work that I want to make sure we get to. Okay, well, I'll, I'll tell you what, pardon me, I'll just sum it up that um, uh, we've got the um, collaborations with other groups in town, with, uh, with other um, organizations around the state, including ANJEC, Sustainable Jersey, our um, uh, Sustainable States Network that I'm not even going to go into. Um, and uh, make sure that you um, have a mechanism for keeping up to date, and, and that's the basically the number nine training training uh, element. Make sure that you you keep up to date with things either through webinars, getting specialized training from um, uh, well, we get it from the Shade Tree Federation and other people. But um, those kinds of things are, are really vital to stay up to date because uh, if you don't, folks in your community will think you're you're really don't have the gravitas or background that um, um, you should have in order to make decisions about or, or take up initiatives to promote um, environmental uh, projects or to do development reviews. Um, you get the training and you can point to all of that. And we've had to do that in Hamilton. We've taken our shots and um, you try to do it nicely, but um, you shoot back and let people know, no, we've got the training, we know what we're talking about. So I'll stop there because I could go on and on. I'm, I'm half Irish and St. Patrick's Day is coming up, so the Blarney is getting ready to flow. So I'm Irish, um, Swedish, and German, I totally get that. There Liz, you go. Uh, Liz, have you um, been keeping an eye on the chat to see what questions folks have? If not, I can go through it as well. Okay. All right, Liz, I think you are muted. So there's some questions about how meetings are run. Um, and I think Dan and I, as the um, EC uh, members, as well as uh, Anjak, <laughs> as with Anjak can talk about this. So there's some questions about um, public comment period. So Dan, do you want to talk about when that happens in your meeting? And then I can talk about uh, mine as well. Sure. Um, public participation is, uh, frankly, pretty limited, um, even though we encourage people at every opportunity to, to come to the meetings and discuss things. Um, periodically, we have, uh, for well, certainly when there's a development review, we get the engineers and the attorneys and that sort of thing. Um, every once in a while, um, someone who's requested to have trees removed will come to the uh, meeting to discuss that, and it gives us the opportunity to 
talk about related issues of uh, uh, environmental stewardship of the land. Um, but if someone does come and say, I just wanted to find out what you're doing, um, uh, that's great. And what we usually do is when we open the, the, the meeting with a, a, a welcome to everybody, <clears throat> because we also have our, our local newspaper there, as well as our um, town representative or our, uh, council representative, and once in a while our um, public works manager. But if there isn't a member of the general public there, we will uh, stop and welcome them directly and ask them to introduce themselves and um, see what um, issues or questions they have. And um, if there's an opportunity, even during the meeting, we'll say, we'll just ask them if they want to join in a discussion, just raise their hand and, and um, we'll take their questions or comments or engage them in that. Um, rather than have, uh, I know our, our council structures public comments in the beginning of the meeting for action items and afterwards for anything else. But uh, rather than maintain that sort of very formal uh, public participation, we try to keep it a little more informal and, and engage people as we go along. Yeah, I was just gonna say, Dan, that's, uh, we do the for we do the latter. So um, we structure ours just like town council meetings, um, yeah. where uh, at the beginning, um, we allow anyone who is attending, um, you know, even if there's council members that aren't EC members, they can bring up anything, anything that they want to talk about. Um, and then at the end, uh, we open it up again. And we just because for the sake of there's so much talk in the chat about how long EC meetings are usually. <laughs> and I totally agree. Ours are usually around two hours also. Um, so I have, so I have something to say about that as well. But um, we do that so that we can kind of keep that to not too long um and uh it we just ask that the uh public if they have comments you know just write them down and then we'll allow them to speak um we just found that it was too much interaction and the meeting was running too long so um and as far as meetings running long a lot of people in the chat were saying you know it never seems like enough time uh, two hours is a lot and we still can't get anything done i think that's a really good time to start looking at whether you want subcommittees Right. Um, because especially site plan reviews can sometimes take the full two hours. So if you have three people on your, you know, for a seven person commission, if you have three people, a five person commission, if you have two people um, that want to work on a site plan, uh, you know, like the week before your meeting, then present what they have found that cuts down on a lot of time. Uh, same with like educational planning, outreach planning, community events, you know, these are all subcommittees that you can have, like what Dan was Dan had on his agenda um, that can cut down on a lot of the time for the actual EC meeting. Right, <clears throat> Alex, you're, you're absolutely right. In, in Hamilton, we, as I said, we get so few people coming to, to our meetings from the general public that when someone shows up, it's like, please stay, don't come back, you know? Um, absolutely, making them feel included is extremely important. You're right. We, mm -hmm. we want to give them um, uh, as much time, I mean, within limits, obviously, but. Uh, as much time to express themselves and, and be involved and feel welcome. Um, and you're absolutely right. Um, you, you saw the uh, agenda, and I guess it's still up, I don't know, but um, there's a lot to talk about, even if you don't have all the shade tree stuff going on uh, as we do in Hamilton. There's a lot to talk about, there's always a lot going on, and the, the importance of subcommittees or at even brief meetings or phone calls or email discussions uh, in between meetings is absolutely vital. Um, you can't do it all at a, a, a two hour, even a three hour meeting. Um, the, uh, the Hamilton Township, Mercer County, JC's uh, where I used to live, used to have a thing where they, somebody would be talking too long and they'd shut them down and say, that's committee work you know, take it, take it outside afterwards um, during their regular monthly meetings. And exactly, that's exactly, yeah. You got to work it that way with subcommittees to, to mm -hmm. push the work forward and then present what's going on and then maybe have some discussion about next steps and then get mm -hmm. back into your, your subcommittees. Yep, like we said, no two ECs are alike. All right, right. Liz, uh, what other questions do you folks have? Uh, there's a lot here. <laughs> I know. Um, and somebody just 
asked about Dan's EC acting as the planning board and zoning board, and they do not. Um, that's you'll see on Dan's agenda that somebody from the zoning board attends. Do you have a common member, Dan, though, from your EC that's on the zoning board? Yeah. Yes, um, that was uh, Commissioner Hosek that you saw there. Uh, he gives the reports. He reports on what they've in, um, been involved in. Actually, he and I did a joint uh, presentation to the Land Use Board a, um, a couple of months ago about our recently completed natural resource inventory, um, which they approved unanimously and sent on to Council for approval. Um, so that's it really vital. Actually, he and, he and I have done a, a – we're working together on the um, – sustainability element for the master plan also. So they're, they're, all of these members, since they have connections to the other groups in town are really, really vital and important. So we wanna make sure we keep up with what's going on with those various boards. There's always a lot of cross fertilization and, and um, uh, new ideas coming out of those reports. Right, mm, and I uh, see, I, uh, you, Liz. Uh, real quick, I, I have I see a very good question. I scrolled back up about um, emails, yes. and this is this is a very yeah. Sheila's nodding because Sheila answered a lot of these in the chat, but this is a very fascinating and gray area. Um, so <laughs> what we what we advocate for is being as safe as possible. Um, there are nefarious ways that you could get around the gray area, but being as safe as possible. So the question was. Um, you know, it does an email thread um, count as a meeting. So because, you know, I would say uh, our legal system is not necessarily the most technologically up to date. So there aren't exactly <laughs> precedents or rules or laws around Zoom, <laughs> and, you know? Um, so uh, we are kind of relying on good faith when we talk about um, what is, what we recommend. So. What we recommend as ANJAC is if there is a, an email thread that has all of the members on the commission, which happens a lot, as I will send out notification emails to the entire, as chair, send out emails to the entire commission. What I do practically is I send it to myself and then CC the group or even BCC the group. And you cannot ask them to reply all. In fact, you should say, do not reply all. Once they reply all and that conversation starts going, you get closer and closer to what could legally be called a meeting that does not have public notice. So the remember, the important part of the Sunshine Law, the intent is to make sure that the public has inputs and there is a, rec a public record of what you are talking about as an environmental commission. So if you are emailing back and forth on an email thread with a quorum, which once again is a majority of the appointed members, not including alternates, that gets closer and closer. There are currently no court cases that have set a precedent in New Jersey about whether or not that is legal or illegal. But like we said, always better to err on the side of let's be as open as possible. So like I said, recommendation is either CC or BCC everyone, tell them not to reply all. They can individually reply to you if you need answers to something, but do not do a group chat, do not do an email thread with everyone. That conversation should always happen at the EC meeting. So just to clear all that up, the reason it's confusing is because it is confusing. <laughs> all right, Liz. Yes, emails can be Oprah. That is uh, an important part. Uh, people had so somebody had asked about um, tools for developing the open space index. As Alex mentioned, that is a requirement under the state law. It's it usually becomes part of the ERI or NRI when you create that. But often, especially in the beginning, as an EC is sort of getting going, they might tackle the open space index first. It is required, and we definitely during the ERI presentation later, and uh, uh, we could also offer other resources for people to do that. But as a new EC or an EC without an ERI, an open space index might be a great place to start. It should be an index with maps of private and public lands that are in your town that are not that are open spaces. So it can be pretty easy to do with today's technology. So we'll be happy to help you out and uh, give you advice on doing that. If you do have an ERI, this is part of another question or NRI. It is in the state law that you then should get access to development plans or site plans to review and to comment on and to ask questions on. 
Um, just so you know, the law does not say there's any punishment if you don't. So you just want to be friendly when you're trying to make sure that that's followed. But that's the other reason to have an ERI on file with the planning board. Again, we'll be going over this during the ERI session and other sessions of this course, but people are asking about it. So there you have it. If I, if I may, I, I would just um, like to double down on the, the, the access to uh, resources and, and encourage all the environmental commissioners uh, here and elsewhere in the state to actively use the resources ANJEC has. Um, it's an absolute treasure trove of material. Other groups like Sustainable Jersey have valuable, valuable materials too, but ANJEC, ANJEC is the mother load. Um, so tap into that resource. We've, we've done it here in Hamilton and has helped uh, improve our operations immensely. Thank you, Dan. I guess I can't say anything. And I don't, I didn't say that just because there's no <laughs> Well, thank you, everybody. I think we've answered most of the questions. Anybody else on staff see anything we really need to cover? Before we I just wanted to say there were a lot of questions about, you know, like, how does, how do, how do we come up with an agenda? How does Dan handle this? How does Dan, you know, and I encourage those people to join the roundtables that we are starting. So the a uh, roundtable discussion for April is going to be um, it kind of advanced intermediate ECs. So it goes a little bit beyond what we talked today was the very basics. If you have um, a, if you have want to go a little bit beyond that and how to be a very, really good EC, how to run great meetings, come to those roundtables because we're going to invite experts um, from ECs that we believe do run meetings very, very well. And then we open it for discussion. So anyone can talk. So you can come and ask questions of other EC chairs, EC members for uh, questions like that. And I see really quickly uh, reiterate the difference between an environmental board and an EC. Um, so an environmental commission is the one that is established by ordinance, can only be dissolved by ordinance. Um, anything beyond that does not have that layer of protection um, from being dissolved. So an environmental board, an environmental committee, environmental advisory committee, green team, those do not have the same level of structure as an environmental commission. So that's why we like environmental commissions. If you want to establish one in your municipality and you don't have one, like Dan said, we, we can help. We would love to help you. Um, so with uh, Dan's endorsement and that endorsement of Anjak. <laughs> Liz, is there anything else we wanna talk about? I don't think so. Thank you, everybody. Just a reminder, these sessions are continuing uh, every day at noon and every night at seven. So the next one is tonight at 7 p.m. We're just gonna be talking about the environmental resource inventory or natural resource inventory or ERI, NRI. Uh, tomorrow we're doing land use and then um, site plan review. And on Thursday, we're having a tour of Atlantic County Utilities Authority, some green energy as well as water treatment. And then Thursday evening at seven is an update on the plastic law and a reminder and some educational resources. So we hope to see you again. The link that you use today will work for all the sessions. So we are glad to see you today and we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you again, Dan and everybody. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Thank you all.